Hi, today I'm going to be going over a board that had a bad SMC. I'm going to go over how it is I diagnosed that problem and what I did to fix it and the things that you should check for so that you don't get owned when you're trying to replace one of these chips. Uh, this is my least favorite repair to do. So again, as somebody who openly admits that I suck at soldering and that I cannot keep my hand steady for shit, yeah, aligning a chip with 96 tiny balls on a board that doesn't have any markings on it sucks. Reballing a chip of any kind, much less a small one, when your hand does something like... Yeah, like I can't... It stays straight and then it's steady, but then it'll just surprise me and move. Sucks. And this is my least... And then you combine that with the fact that the boards that I'm taking them off of look like this. Does that inspire confidence or what? Anyway, so let's go over the bullshit over here. So... You can see that I've replaced the SMC on this board because it's uh, st I haven't f ultrasonic it yet. It's still covered in, in flux. That is my SMC. That is my new SMC. Well, not new. Who am I kidding? SMC that I stole off of some other fucked up ass motherboard right there. Again, one of the reasons this is my least favorite repair is how do you know that the motherboard you're taking the SMC off of isn't bad? You don't know. That motherboard may very well have been thrown away because it has a bad SMC. This is why this business needs uh, some sort of legitimacy to it. This is why I, 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 sh I should be able to program that if I want to buy a programmer. I should have access to buying those programmed if I'm willing to pay money. But I can't because Apple doesn't give a fuck if you can fix any of their products. What they care about is that you can buy new ones or that you could get bent over and fucked in the ass at the Apple store paying $750 to $1250 to fix a board that goes into a $700 computer. It doesn't make sense. I digress. So we're going to go over into the schematic over here. I'm going to talk about what wasn't working on this board. This is not a real-time repair. I don't do SMC videos in real time for obvious reasons. I did one where I got to show you exactly how miserable it was and exactly what all the stupid, fucked-up-ass shit I did while I was trying to solder an SMC that time. I am not I, I am not the person to watch if you're looking for like perfect micro soldering of small things. You, by again, you you could you, you there's got to be a toddler out there that is better at that stuff than I am. Like again, that that is that is not where I claim to be any good and that that's not how I make money. So, let's go to the screen capture here and stop my incessant chattering. So there is a page on the schematic that shows you every single power rail on the machine. So you find that page, and I was searching through to figure out what power rails were missing. Don't you, don't you fuck with me, don't you? No, I got, I got a dedicated screen for Open Broadcaster now, so you can't do that anymore. Nice try, mofo. Anyway, so you know how many videos got ruined by that? Seriously, where like I would, the wrong key would get hit on the keyboard, or I would, you know, something like that, and. It would get changed, and I wouldn't notice until it was done that that was a video I had to delete. But I got an open broadcaster monitor now, so no, no more of that shit. So I have all these rails over here, and I'm measuring them on the motherboard. So I'm going over here, and I can tie it into the board view software. I hit N, I can type in this, and I can measure everywhere in the motherboard where a point shows up. I just measure one of them, and I see if the voltage is there. And the voltage was not there for PP5VS5. Now, we, we go to the page for that, which is, that is made by U7200. Now, I measured for it, and I didn't get anything on PP5ES5 LDO. When I get a data sheet for this chip, so when I go to TPS51125, let's just open. So when I go to a data sheet for this chip, I want to see what is responsible for creating PP5ES5. As I always say, you shouldn't be replacing a chip before seeing if that chip is being told to turn on. You should use your brain a little and try to have a basic idea how things work before you go nuts replacing things. See how this thing actually works. What turns it on? So I go for a data sheet. Let me see if I can find the data sheet here that tells me what every single pin does. So I'm going to try to find that on Texas Instruments' website. Texas Instruments is very good with this type of stuff. They usually have this so that you can download it. And for some reason, either because I haven't had breakfast yet and it's 5.58 p.m. or because I am, you know, they, they just removed it, I can't find it anywhere. I'm sure it's just because I have... Nice try, mofo. So anyway, let's just... Five data sheet, PD. I just don't have patience. I know it's, it's probably like right in front of me and I'm ignoring it. I was probably right on that page. But I'm hungry and I just want a GTFO. So let's see. Did they redesign this? Because I remember this being easier last time. 
It's right in front of me, isn't it? Just give me a... There we go. Fuck you, Texas Instruments' website. Okay, so let's see. Here we go. Pin functions. So let's see. For turning on the LDO. Now, my best guess would be to turn on PP5VS5. Looking at the schematic, my best guess is that 5v3, v3, reg enable may be it. So you have these entry pins. This, this ship creates three power rails. It creates PP3V3S5. It creates PP5VS3. And it creates PP5VS5. So this chip is responsible for three power rails. And you have two entry pins to turning them on, and then one enable pin. So P5VS3, I'm guessing that's for that. P3V3S5, that's for that. And then 5V3V3EN, I'm guessing that's for the LDO because that's the you know, PP5VS5 because that's the only enable left. If I wasn't sure, again, let's just go back here and see what it is that pin 13 does. Opens LDOs on. So it turns on LDO. The only pin here that says LDO is PP5VS5. And I can assume that that is what turns this on. So what I do is I measure on the enable over here, and I want to see what I get. On that enable, I get shit. So then I decided to check on R7273. On R7273, I get the resistor is totally fine. The resistor is the exact impedance that it's supposed to be. So here it says that that's supposed to be 100 kilo ohms. On that resistor with my multimeter, I measured 100 kilo ohms, and it still wasn't working. So I go over here and I search for where this comes from. Again, now I know. Don't replace my chip. Again, that's where I, I get. To, I talk about that monkey see, monkey do bullshit, where people are doing exactly what it is. They, you know, like the internet tells them, or they do exactly what it is. They you know, they think they want to do, that chip's not making the power. Let's replace it. No, mofo, it's not being told to turn on. So then I check over here. And this is, this is a, it looks like a bunch of complicated shit, but just bear with me here. So you have in and in and then out and out. What does logic tell you this shit does? Logic tells me that when you have input, that you get output. So the first thing I'm going to do here is I'm going to check, is this thing being told, that, you know, is this chip turning on? So with the VDD pin, do I have voltage? That is the power that's needed for that thing to actually turn on. And that's there. Then I check for SMC PM G2 EN. It's not there. And then my output is not there. So this is missing. So I need that for this stuff to work. So I figure out where this is coming from and where is this signal coming from but the SMC. Now, do I replace the SMC yet? No. The first thing I want to do before I replace the SMC is, is my SMC turning on? So let's go back to the diagram again. Is my SMC getting power? Is my SMC being told to turn on? This is a, this is a common thing. A lot of people will actually replace or reball an SMC when that shit ain't even being told to turn on. So let's get a little bit of an idea of how this works here. So when you go over here on the power system architecture, which is on page three of the ADC adapter in, PPDC in G3 hot is going to go to this chip, which creates the 3.42 volt power rail. The 3.42 volt power rail powers several things in the computer. One of them being this chip for SMC reset L, SMC per good, meaning SMC power good, meaning that if this signal is not there, if this SMC reset L is not there, then you're not going to have an SMC turning on and you're going to be fucked. See that over there, SMC power good goes to the SMC. So what I want to do is I want to check that area and see what's going on first. Again, I, I, not only do I want to do things in order, what is the order of operations? What's the order these things are supposed to happen? It's not just about this voltage rail is missing. It's not just about this power rail is shorted to ground. It's about what is the order? What is the order this is supposed to occur in? There are, uh, this schematic is 86 pages. I don't want to go through 86 pages of shit and measure every single little thing. I want to know what's supposed to happen, what order it's supposed to happen, so that I don't wind up wasting my time. Again, a lot of people joke, oh, you don't spend 20 minutes on most of your border pairs. Sit next to me. I do. So this over here, SMC reset L, is supposed to be on. And if this is not here, the SMC won't turn on. We check this, three volts. So now I know, SMC bad. So replace SMC. And this is the beautiful picture over here. Perfectly clean. Apple would never tell we were there. Still in Apple Care warranty. My balls. <laughs> and it's good. And 
Yeah, another thing is, uh, so one of the things you should do if you're smart, not an idiot like me, is you should make a little marking on the board so that you actually know where this goes. So don't do it by this. So like, don't cut traces and be an idiot. But what you should do is you should, you could see where there's no trace. You can make a little mark on the board so that you actually know where that thing goes. Again, I always forget to do that. And I am very surprised that by hand I was able to align that. It does shift in a place. Don't get it twisted. A lot of people say, well, it shifts in a place. So you don't have to worry about how you align it with BGA. Well, what if you have everything off by one ball? What if you have everything off by two balls? I am one of the very, very few people in the world who not only regularly misaligns BGA in the middle of the soldering process, but with a $7,000 BGA rework machine that has an optical alignment camera for the solely for the purpose of aligning this stuff properly, frequently misaligns the chip. I actually do this by hand, believe it or not. I don't, yeah, I, I don't do it with that just because you can do this by hand. You can do this with the Hacko. Uh, you can align it without that. And it doesn't need the, it, it just doesn't need that level of sophistication that you get with that machine. That uh, For a GPU, fuck no, am I doing it with this. But an SMC, yeah, I, I just treat it as I would a big LP8550. And if you're unfamiliar or unsure as to how you should go about soldering that chip, you can watch my video. And once you've watched my video on how to solder an SMC, you'll know exactly how you, you, shouldn't, you shouldn't solder an SMC. You'll learn a lot from that video on uh, just, just, you know, again, just how much doubt you should have that anything that I'm telling you to do is actually right. Because again, like, you watch, watch me solder an SMC, you'll laugh. But that's that. And oh, I almost forgot. I'm supposed to show you that the thing works. Because if I don't show you that it works, it means that I am full of shit. So again, uh, now, I want, I'm in a rush to get myself food, so you are pretty much going to see the fan spin if I get a fan. Where did my fan go? Hello. Oh, I left it in here because I'm hungry. Oh, boy. Second I hit stop record, I can run out and get food. I am so excited. Are you excited for me? So, again, if I didn't have five volts, this wouldn't turn on. But, isn't that the most beautiful thing you've ever seen? And that's that. And I hope you learned something.